Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are looking at greatest common factor, and then we are going to simplify fractions, but we're going to do it in a fun and subtle way. So, what you can expect in this is that we're going to talk about factors, greatest common factor, and then we're going to simplify fractions. So, let's go ahead and talk about factors. A factor multiplies with another factor to give you a number. For example, 2 times 4 is 8. The factors are 2 and 4. Okay, 2 and 4 are factors of 8. When we turn that around, we would say that 8 is divisible by 4 and 2. All right, so factors are the smaller parts that multiply together to give you those larger numbers. In this example, 2 and 4 are factors, and 8 is divisible by 4 and 2. So let's do a little bit of practice. I want you to go ahead and list the factors of 12. You can pause the recording, try and do that on your own. Hi, I hope you're back now. Um, to list the factors, what I like to do is use something that looks kind of like a rainbow, where I list numbers um, in pairs. So I'll say 1 times 12 is 12. So those are both factors of 12. 6 times 2 is 12, or 2 times 6 is 12, and 3 times 4 is 12. And when you list them like this, it kind of looks like a rainbow when you, when you uh, connect together the multiplication pairs. Um, 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, you don't have to color code it like a rainbow, but that's fun too. All right, so you list the factors to make a rainbow like that. All right. Now remember, the number 12, we would not say 12, um, the way we would say this with the number 12 is 12 is divisible by each of these numbers. 12 is divisible by 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. A number is divisible by itself as well. Okay, so these are the factors of 12, and 12 is divisible by each of those numbers. Now let's go one step further and talk about common factors. Common factors are factors that are the same. So the way that we would find common factors of numbers like 12 and 14 is that we would list the factors of both numbers. So we'll list the factors of 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12, we've already done those ones, and the factors of 14, 1, 2, 7, and 14, okay, those are the factors of both numbers. Now, to identify common factors, we just look at those lists and say, which factors are common? And we usually don't consider the number 1 a common factor, although it's common factor for everything. Um, we'll just identify the common factors other than 1. So there we go. Our common factors other than 1 are 2 in this case. There's just the common factor of 2. Both of these numbers have lots of factors but 2 is the only one that is common between them. We're going to take this one step further and talk about our greatest common factor, often called the GCF. When you're asked to find the greatest common factor of two numbers, you're going to follow those same steps that we just did. You list the factors. In this case, I'm listing the factors of 18 and also the factors of 24. Okay, I'm not drawing in the rainbows, but you certainly can to show that the first number times the last number gives you 18 and working your way into the center. It's a good way to make sure you don't miss any. Okay, now I'm going to identify all of the common factors. Again, I'm eliminating one. I don't really consider one a common factor because it doesn't help us really um, to, to do anything that we're going to be doing here. So I'm not identifying 1, so I'll identify in this case that they have common factors of 2, 3, and 6. Both numbers are divisible by um, 2, 3, and 6. And the next step is to find the greatest common factor. That is the largest number that is a factor of both of the numbers. In this case, what is it? 6, exactly. 6 is the largest number that is a factor of both 18 and 24. Okay, so, so far we haven't done anything too earth shattering or amazing, but what we are going to do is get into fractions. And I know you might think, oh, fractions, that's, that's tough. But all we're going to do is find the greatest common factor of the numerator and denominator, or the top and bottom of the fraction. 
Then we divide the numerator and denominator by that greatest common factor and then you're done. You can work with fractions, trust me. Let's go through this and, and just simplify a fraction. We're going to simplify 15 over 25. We'll start out by listing our factors. 15 is 1, 3, 5, and 15. 25 is 1, 5, and 25. Those are the factors of the numerator and denominator of the fraction. Let's identify the greatest common factor. We don't have to list all of the common factors. Let's skip right to this. What's the greatest common factor? 5. So now I'm going to divide the numerator and denominator, both the top and bottom of the fraction, by 5. See that? 15 divided by 5, 25 divided by 5, and I get 3 over 5. You can work with fractions. That's all it is. You're adding in, you're finding factors, identifying greatest common factor, which you did, and now you're just dividing the top and bottom by that greatest common factor. This is how we simplify fractions. That's it. You're finding factors. Okay? Another way to say simplifying a fraction is writing a fraction in lowest terms. Okay, that's another way to say the same exact thing. So let's do this one together. You can try pausing it and working this one out on your own. Welcome back. Hopefully you did pause it and try it out. The first step is to list the factors. Factors of 13 are 1 and 13. It is a prime number. The factors of 39 are 1, 3, 13, and 39. Now, some people might stop at this point and go, I don't know. Is 13 divisible by 13? And it is. Any number is divisible by itself. So our greatest common factor can be one of the numbers. In this case, it is. This is one of those trick questions that kind of throws people off a little bit, so I wanted to put it in the video. All right, 13 is our greatest common factor. It is one of our numbers. So when we divide both the numerator and denominator by 13, we're going to end up with a fraction of 1 third. Okay, no problem. It is okay to have the greatest common factor be one of your numbers. That's okay. It's actually very common to have that happen. Okay, so what happened today? How on earth did we just learn how to simplify fractions? Well, we found factors, identified the greatest common factor, and used that to simplify fractions. Fractions don't have to be complicated. Just look at it in steps, all right? You know how to find factors. You know how to find greatest common factors. The next step is just using them to simplify fractions. You did a great job today. I hope this lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.